Okay, so welcome back to another Bitwig tutorial and this one uh, we're gonna do something simple. Uh, it's gonna be very easy. Maybe you already know or maybe you have some doubts and I'm gonna just clear them up. Uh, clear them out. Um, I'm gonna go over here at the bottom and I'm gonna talk why do you get these options? Why, what are they? And I'm gonna talk about this option and this options right here. You know, the snapping and everything else. So first we're going to start easy. We're going to start with the ones we have right here. Notice that I have a pretty uh, blank project right here. And this is just an empty clip. We have nothing. Okay. So first of all, we're going to start with this. So notice that you have the eye, which is the inspector panel. Now you can close this if you want, right? You don't need to have this on all the time. You just can close it and have more space to work right here on the arranger or on the clip view. So yeah, yeah, so you can close it. Now, of course, this is what, uh, you know, where uh, this is important. Since you have this track right here, you have no information what's, what's your input and what's your output. And, you know, you don't have it. You need to go to the inspector in order to see what you're doing, uh, where are you going. So what this does, this option right here is going to show you all your ins and all your outs, right? Just pretty simple. Now, then what happens if you have more tracks? I'm going to go and just duplicate. And I'm going to go and duplicate. So we have one, two, and three. And let's say that you have a lot of tracks, right? Let's just pretend right now. So this one, what it does, it's just going to make it smaller or make it wider. Now, the bad thing, uh, this is actually a good thing, because if you have a million tracks and you want to, to make it narrow, you just can do it by, you know, clicking one button. Now, some other DAWs, and this could be a future request uh, to Bitwig, some other DAWs, they let you uh, kind of a... Uh, adjust the size the uh, relative size you have like a uh, some a control right here like a fader and if you go up it's going to make all uh, just bigger all the tracks bigger and uh, you know proportionally and if you go you know low on that fader it's just going to go and make them smaller this is something that you get in studio one that it's super useful on this one you just can go make it big or make it you know small that's it so then you have this one's uh and you can see what it does is going to show or hide your effects. Sometimes having the effects right there is just a little bit annoying, right? So maybe you're not using them or maybe you have a lot of effects and they're just in the way. So you can just hide them with this button right here. Now, this one is a little bit special. Now, if I click, you know, nothing happens. And it's because this one is for the uh, kind of uh, the... Um, uh the hidden tracks the deactivated tracks and let me just give you an example let just let me just prepare an example okay so now what i have right here is an arp right with some you know just an arp and i have a pulse synth with one of the patches i offer on patreon i'm not trying to well i'm trying to but <laughs> you can go to patreon and if you support the channel just three bucks i'm, I'm giving you preset packs so this is one of the presets you get <laughs> And you have controls pretty much. I do the macros and all the work and add the effects. So yeah, pretty simple, just pretty simple. The thing is that sometimes having a lot of plugins, let's say that you use a lot of serum, right? And serum is a very, it's just consuming, uh, consumes a lot of CPU. So maybe you don't want this, right? So what you want to do, once you have it ready, you are gonna go and bounce the track. Now, of course you can do pre-fader, pre-effects, or whatever it is that you want to do. In this case, I'm just gonna do post fader. It's gonna be post fader. It means uh, after this volume, it's gonna just listen to this volume. So it, this is gonna bounce it to uh, an audio track. So now, of course, we have two versions: the one using MIDI, this one, and the one with the audio. Right? Pretty simple. Now, of course, the audio one has nothing. So it has a very low, you know, usage on the CPU. Now, the thing is that now you don't need this one anymore, but you don't want to delete it. You shouldn't be deleting this. So that's why you get the deactivate and the toggle. I'm going to go, I'm going to right click on this track and I'm going to just deactivate it. So we can save that, uh, you know, CPU. And I'm going to go and do something like this. Now, the thing is that if you have a session with 40 tracks and you have like, set, I don't know, 10 deactivated tracks, they are just in the way, right? They're just in the way. That's why you get this button. With this one, you hide all the deactivated tracks. All right? And if you want to see them again, you just bring them back. 
hopefully you understand this and you know what what's the point you know of having all having having all of this so i want to talk about the options that we have right here at the bottom right this one so this one is the automation follows clips uh, clip editing okay so let's say that you have some automation going on right i'm going to go right here and i'm going to say that we want to uh, we have one two three and four and for now i'm just going to make it four right it's going to make it four and you have some automation going so we're going to go and start writing some automation this is just going to be on the one and then it's going to go down and then it's going to go up and it's going to stabilize before we start the second one right pretty simple pretty simple stuff so if i do play of course this is going to go we don't have a sound but it's going to go up in volume down in volume and then it's going to stabilize at one point now what happens if you want to move the clip right what should happen so if i move the clip the automation is going to follow the clip and this is what this means if you grab if you have some automation in a part of the clip whenever you move it the automation will just follow right this is what it means oh made a mistake right there okay so what happens and let me just disable this what happens if you just toggle this off? So you're going to move the clip and the automation will not follow. That's it. You know, that's it. And of course, this has some kind of, uh, you know, benefits. So let's say that your automation is something like that. Yeah, really, you don't really care about this part of the automation. So now if you have it on and you move it, that you move this clip, the automation, of course, will follow. Now, of course, you need to make sure that you don't have any anything extra right here. Now, what happens if you want to do this, but you want to duplicate? Now, whenever you duplicate a clip that has automation, it's going to copy the automation, right? So I have three different clips that will do pretty much the same thing, and they have the same automation. Now, what happens if I don't want to, uh, you know, uh, have automation on the second one? I just want it on the first and on the third one. So, of course, this is possible. You could go right here and just do kaboom, all the automation and you know problem fixed but what you can also do you can say okay so now i'm going to be grabbing this i'm going to duplicate this i don't have i'm not getting kind of a inheriting the automation and now i'm going to go and just click on it click on it and duplicate this again and i'm going to have the same automation again so it's one nothing and one so that's why you know you have this option just to work with the automation and moving the clips and duplicating clips so now we're going to talk about this. So you have the grid and then the snap too. And they are just two different things. They work, uh, they work together, but they're different things. So adapt adaptive, it means that whenever you go, uh, you zoom in and you zoom out the grid, you know, the lines right here you have at the bottom, at the, uh, at the back, they're just going to be adapting to your zoom. I know that's, you know, pretty simple to understand. It's by default. Now, the adaptive, by default is 116 you know but whenever you toggle this off you just get the more options right so i'm gonna go right here just make it bigger and right now we have we have that we have 116 so let me just go maybe there we have 116 what happens if i want more so i'm gonna go and i'm gonna go to 18 i want to 12 and notice that you're changing the grid at the back now at one point if I go to 132s, notice that we get much more. Now, if I go more, you start, you start to lose that because there is not enough space for the software to, you know, show the grid. Now, this is going to show when you zoom in a little bit. Same thing for the other one, 128. And it's just cr a crazy amount of, you know, just a crazy amount. But, you know, you can do it. Uh, and this is something that you do, of course, manually. Uh, if you toggle the adaptive uh, off. Now, then you have the stride. And let me just go and move the clip right here so we can see it. So I'm going to go and notice that we are on the one right here. Okay. So we have one, two, three, four. And I'm going to go and make, leave it on 16. So stride in this case is one, two, three, and four. What happens if I change this? It's going to change the amount off. Of course, I'm going to need maybe to go right here. So notice is again, one, two, three, four. I'm gonna go and make it five. And there we go. 
notice that when I change it, let me just make this a little bit bigger. We have one, two, three, four. I'm going to change it to the next one and we get more grids inside. Then we get more and then we get more and then we get, we start, you know, just to get different, you know, get subdivisions. Then the technical name is just subdivisions. Okay. So I had to make a tiny pause. So let's talk about the snapping because it's very important. So the snapping, it means that uh, whatever clip you have right here, if you go to the description, it says, if you hover, it's going to say, enable this option to snap events, to bit, uh, to be grid lines, uh, grid lines during mouse interaction. So mouse interactions and snap events, uh, it's going to be moving the clip with the mouse. That's, that's what it means pretty much in lame terms. So the grid, uh, the snapping, it means that it will snap to the lines you have at the back. That's what it means. So the grid, it means that it will perfectly snap every time that you move it to the grid you have behind. Pretty simple to understand. You could try it at home. And if you, uh, you know, you try to put the clip like right here, you know, not perfectly right there, not, 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 you know, on top of the grid, not perfectly aligned. It's just not going to work. It's just going to go and snap it by default. You know? So if you really want to do something like offsetting a little bit, you need to zoom a lot and then you're going to go into kind of a, you know, micro adjustments. But if you have it in a kind of a big size, it's going to snap by default. All right. So pretty simple, pretty simple to understand. Then you have the grand offset. Now, of course, sometimes you want to snap it, but you don't want to snap it uh, to uh, just, you know, the lines. You want to do a little bit of, of setting. So this is just going to work. I'm going to go and start moving it. And notice at one point is going to go and snap it to off grid. Right? It's snapping right there. It's not snapping here. So it's letting you do a little bit of offset snapping. That's what it means. Now you're snapping to the grid and you can snap it offset. Pretty simple, you know, thing to understand. So again, just different ways. Now, then you have, uh, you can toggle this and maybe toggle the grid and you just only solely uh, just snap it offset, right? Okay. So then you have the events and this one is a little bit different. If I hover, it says enable this option to snap events to the start of other, you know, events during mouse interactions. Okay. It's the same thing. Mouse interactions, it's moving the clip. Now, if I have this on and I do the grid, I can have the grid and events, uh, nothing is going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. It's going to move it and it's just going to snap it to the grid. By default, it's just the default behavior. Now I'm going to go and create a different clip. I'm going to go right here at the bottom, the top, and I'm going to go and just put it right there. I'm going to go there and disable the snap to grid. So now it's going to snap to an event. And the clip right here at the top, this one, the first one, is an event. So if I start dragging, it's going to snap to that one. That's an event. Another event is going to be the playback cursor. If I go right here, it's going to be snapping to the playback cursor. If I go maybe there at the same time, again, it's just going to should be snapping to the playback cursor. There we go. It's just snapping there. Or the events. If I move the event, nothing is going to happen right here and snap. That's, that's what this means. Okay, so pretty simple, pretty simple, you know, things to understand, but, you know, very useful. Now, most of the time, you're just going to use the grid and you're going to use the adaptive. That's, that's just, you know, just the truth. Now, what happens if you hate, you really, really hate uh, the snap too, right? Notice that I can click this one and if I click it, I'm not toggling this off. You can add more. Or you can just remove this one, but you cannot disable it. So you, here you have the button uh, to disable. So the snapping is no more. So you can manually just move this and put it whatever you want. Right? Now, this, of course, it's nice because you can do a little bit of offsetting if you wish. You know, if you really must. But if you want to snap it, it's just not going to happen. You're going to need to zoom a lot and manually uh, to snap it to the line if that's what you want to do. If that's the case, you go right here 
and you just snap it to the grid, right? Okay, so then you have the last one, and this is the last thing we're going to talk about, and this one is super simple. That's why, you know, I left this for the end. Uh, it says follow playback. Okay, so I'm going to go, I'm going to put this right here. Let's say that our we have a track, and the track is kind of a, I don't know, 16 long, and uh, I'm going to go, um, I don't need the loop, but it's just a very long track. Let's, let's just pretend, all right? So we're going to say that we have this zoomed in right here. So whenever I do play, it's going to do the playback of this. And by default, it's just going to move and show us the next. And show us the next and show us the next. That's the default behavior. Now, what if I don't want this? I'm going to go here and disable. I'm going to do the playback. And this is going to keep going, keep going, keep going. But I'm going to be on the same spot. Now, maybe you're wondering why is this useful? Now, sometimes you're going to be just, you know, make, making a track and making some automation and maybe you want to hear something and hear the rest. And if you're working with automation, you know, you're doing something right here and then it's just going to move <laughs> and that sucks. So maybe you don't want this. So disabling the playback just so you can still work on your automation and then move forward. So, you know, there are all of this are just optional tools that you get that might be useful uh, at a certain time. You know, it just it depends on what you're doing. All right. So. That's it. So hopefully uh, you learn something. Oh, and, and one more thing. When you go right here to a clip, to a MIDI clip, notice that these options right here at the bottom, they just uh, work pretty much the same. You have the snap to grid, you have the follow playback. It works the same way, but you know, with the MIDI information that you have inside. Uh, the only thing that's a, a little bit different is the adaptive. For example, I'm going to go over there and, you know, we say we have this clip and I'm going to go and say that if I don't do the adaptive, I'm going to go and say that I want one, two. So whenever I create a clip, it's going to have that size. All right. So what, what if I want to do a little bit more detail, right? I want one sixteenths. So I'm going to do one. I'm going to adjust it to there. And then every time I, you know, add a MIDI, it's going to be one sixteenths. So what if I don't want to do that? What if I want a kind of a more narrow grid? You can do a 164 or you can go insane and do something like that. But, you know, let's say 64. All right. So as soon as you zoom in, you're going to start getting, you know, more grits. Now, of course, you're going to need to adjust it. And then once you do, then you can do 164. This is super small. Just super tiny. If I zoom this out, you know, it's just super tiny. But again, this is, you know, how this works. Everything else just works the same. Right, so hopefully you uh, learned something on this one. And this video was actually a request from a Patreon. Uh, well, actually, a good request. It was a good idea because this is something I've never seen on YouTube. Someone explaining this. So now you have a resource, right? And now there is a video. So this was uh, a request from a patron. I thank the patron, uh, but you know, just for making the making the request. And uh, remember, of course, to check Patreon just to get you know sample packs and preset packs and other stuff and uh, just just to support the channel so hopefully you like this you learn something and see you on the next one